What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 7 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Imric Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, a double dragon day saw us take down both Lamoro and Gordonar's Fury on the two episodes of Wednesday. That went pretty well, we do have the buffs for 8 and 20 turns now, which will make our armies considerably stronger and hopefully allow us to get some great use out of them as we attack Nurgle. Frankly, getting the Gordonar's Fury and the flaming attacks for all of our armies, specifically for fighting the uh, Nurglites, seems very appropriate. Uh, cauterize the wound and burn out the plague and all that sort of jazz. So, pretty happy about that. Now, we left off last episode with a somewhat dire situation up here around the gates of Jara's Da Bloodhorn, who is that darn beastman army that I know I should have destroyed and I <laughs> and I knew this would happen too I was just like when when we when we saw it pop up I was like man I'm gonna regret not destroying this right now I know and I <laughs> Oh, damn it. I did this to myself, so I'm not even... Well, I, I am I am upset at past Ruinous, but I'm kind of used to him screwing me over. So anyway. Anyway. Uh, all right. So, Feodian. We're going to move you up north. I'm going to say an ambush stance. In March stance, you should still be able to approach this place if they don't attack. If they do attack, well, then you wouldn't be able to reach it right now, anyway. The main reason I want you in ambush stance is because, uh, well, they thus wouldn't be able to attack you and they can't see your presence. Next, to defend the gates of Jar, I guess we're raising some dragons and... and where was that flammable art? Archmage, right here. It was a uh, uh, high magic archmage, which is good because we spammed that lovely... Uh Oh, we got free money out of that as well. Uh, we spammed the Apotheosis last time we fought, and more likely than not, we should probably be doing so again. Uh, this reduces the miscast chance and cooldown. Yeah, I mean, I'm a... Shield of Sapphire is also a pretty good pickup here, but I think we would rather just repeatedly spam Apotheosis, since pretty much all the work potentially here would be done by these two dragons. Lamoureux and Gordner. That's basically all of our money. Um, but we're going to put them in Imric's army where they hopefully won't cost all of that much. Uh, at least not after this. I'm not going to bother getting any other regiments of Renown because it's already ludicrously expensive. And it's just that these would go into Imric's army temporarily anyway. So we just have to head down there after we defend this. Presumably we don't get killed. I wonder how much uh, damage the Saigors will be able to do to the dragons whilst they're flying. Oh, our money. It's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone. All right. Uh, what about items? I mean, do we risk giving you items? I mean, the Sun Shard isn't going to be of any use to you here. We could give you, let's say, Talisman of Preservation. Mm, maybe Floriat's Robe. It'll keep you alive to keep casting Apotheosis, even though it'll completely reduce your ability to do damage. I mean, not the worst idea. Uh, Scroll of Aramar might be able to help us send somebody running. I'm not going to pop a healing potion on you, though. Uh, we could give you Shrieking Blade. You already have magical attacks, but the cause fear certainly has a, a use to it. And then lastly, what kind of armor could we give you? Well, I guess it's really only the armor of Silvered Steel, which is not great in this particular situation. But I don't really want to swap a lot of items around. I am tempted but to give you the uh, bound, uh, bound fiery convocation, the Cain's Ring of Fury. Hmm. I don't know, I always uh, I always think it's, I don't know, somewhat iffy swapping items around too much. On the one hand, they enabled you to do it now as many times as you want per turn, but there used to be a cooldown on that, didn't there? Am I, did I dream that? There used to be a cooldown, right? But anyway. Like, it would take the turn to actually swap stuff, and now it no longer does. But anyway, anyway, let's get going here. We probably do have at least a few buildings to be building. Not at the gates of Jar, because we're waiting for it to be upgraded. What about here? I mean, I guess we could get the uh, plaza going here immediately, get that public order up and running, and... This would reduce the cost of this, but we'd save about 100 gold. Eh. I don't think I care enough about the 100 gold to bother waiting on it. And then we'll keep upgrading the plaza as we go as well. All right, what's up next? Any other places need to be building anything? You are looking actually not good. Let's build the colonnade here. 
And then we'll need to upgrade that to the tier 3 as well. What about the plane of bones? Nothing here and there probably won't be for a while, so no need to switch. What about Volzanville? We still have the colonnade here and we certainly still need public order. I was really banking on building a few other things here, though. Hmm... Just up with the public order problems, I don't think we can get rid of it. And we will still need stone walls here and here because the uh, the vampire coast is likely to attack us again. Oh, plus we have the iron here in Vol's Anvil. Man, all right, well, we'll need to get uh, Arathon back there to build him some eagles, but for now, I don't see anything else that uh, we can do. So, uh, let's end the turn, uh, let's see what happens with all of this, and let's hope we don't lose a bunch of items and both of our dragons. I mean, they're the special dragons, they should be able to contribute to this quite a bit, even if it is a full stack. I am concerned, but excited at the same time. Let's see. All right, and as usual, while the turn is ending, yes, we made the engagement threshold, so we'll be doing an hour-long episode this time around, and the engagement threshold now remains at 400 likes and 50 comments for the next episode to be an hour long as well. And Bloodhorn, I take it you are in the sort of end of the turn order? Ah, there you... He besieged? Okay, I wasn't expecting that. I really wasn't expecting that. Huh. I, f I figured either he'd attack or he'd not attack, but I he wouldn't besiege us. Okay. Uh, ho hopefully he won't run if we reinforce. I guess we're about to find out. Can you move in regular stance? You can, but I'm a little bit concerned because if he backs off once we do this, if he backs off, then we wouldn't be able to catch him if we're in march stance because we wouldn't be, or if we're in regular stance because we wouldn't be able to switch. Yeah. Alright, what do you have in terms of spells? Let's get you the Dwellers Below. Uh, we're still going to wait on all of this, but you can certainly provide a decent amount of spell work to help these guys out. In fact, I'm tempted to double up on the Dwellers Below and regrowth. Regrow the dragons and make them make the enemies dwell below. We don't actually have a lot of mana, but a single cast could probably wipe out a lot of the enemy infantry, if this works out. Now, will they fight? And they will fight indeed, all right. Well, that sounds good to me. Pyrrhic victory, but we do have two Ringers Super Dragons, and we do have Feodien, who's a, uh, well, not a mighty caster on the level of Michaela, perhaps, but uh, she's certainly, uh, she's certainly made some headway to being one. Go. All right, slay them indeed, simple and to the point for yet another double dragon day, as Gordonar and Lamoro are dragons of ice and fire, and will attempt to work together to take down this uh, beastman stack. Kind of unusual, I suppose, to have beastmen in the Darklands, not a lot of forest after all, uh, for them to hide in, so we'll see. Anyway, here we go, first of the fire breaths, looking pretty good there, Gordonar, right into the middle of the blobs of enemies. Unlike Lamoureau, Gordonar has Vanguard deployment, so he was able to close the distance with the enemy army quite quick and burninate many a gore and ungore, and uh, thereby rip them apart. A very, very nice breath, sir. Now let's see how much of that did. 266 kills and 31k damage with one breath. Pretty darn solid, I should say. And do have to watch out for those uh, gores, and we back the rest of our army away to where, hopefully, the enemy Cygors can't actually hit them, as in the rest of our army. And now we'll see how the rest of the enemy army stands up to the Ice Breath. And just gotta find a good target. Oh, okay, close. <laughs> Watching out for those attacks from the Cygors. And there we go, Dragon Breath number two. This one perhaps not quite as good, mostly because the enemies weren't blobbed up nearly as much. But not to worry, we had to get those on cooldown since we have other uses of the Dragon Breaths. And uh, they'll be up and running before long. In the meantime, we land upon some Chaos Warhounds. They're a relatively easy target. They don't stand too much of a chance at hurting our dragons and also could be potentially annoying in uh, running around the rest of our limited forces to get at our archers. So, 
So, the dragons should rip them apart. Uh, I noticed that uh, Gordonar still has only 60 armor, so 10 armor plus the invocation armor, I guess. Hmm. Wait, no, we don't have that invocation anymore, do we? Either way, uh, even even this special sun dragon is still relatively lightly armored. Not that uh, uh, not that that's uh, helping uh, the beastmen all that much. Dragons are having a pretty fun time bounding and pouncing throughout the enemy ranks, and uh, the enemy cygors actually chucking their rocks at us are probably hurting some of their own units as well. Anyway, in the meantime, of course, this is only two units, and while they have damaged the enemy army fairly heavily already, uh, it only keeps only about half of the enemy army back. So, here come the rest. Fortunately, the Archmage of Life, Feodian, who was with Imric for most of the uh, campaign so far, has made it onto the field, and will help either heal the dragons or defend against the onslaught of beastmen. Specifically, we got dwellers below for a reason and there's a big old target. They will run by a little bit of it, but we'll still get slowed down and this will be far enough away not to clip our own units. Dwellers below an extremely scary spell that does massive amounts of damage, and those beastmen are going to get uh, pretty darn obliterated by it. There we go. So, to compare, five 582 kills, 87 counts still rising. Uh, okay, close to 600 kills and 56k damage from a single spell. And it hit three units and it destroyed three units, which is pretty appropriate. Next up, we still have the Minotaurs here, so our Noble and Spears will attempt to hold them back while our Archers focus them down. And it's time for the Dragons to move towards us as well. Got another breath out of Lamoureux, a little bit of a better one this time around, increasing the kill numbers. And we're going to get the, uh, the Gordonar's second breath down as well. Before moving both dragons to hunt down those minotaurs as they're a bigger threat. Now, if you're wondering why I ignored the Saigors, uh, it's mostly because they were at first out of range of the rest of the army, and also because the dragons can take the hits, and as long as we have healing. And healing we do have, so it's better to allow the Saigors to attack us while we force the rest of the enemy army to rout. Saigors have a big enough HP pool that I feel like it would take too long to work on them, wherein we could work on the fragile beastman army instead. And ooh, that's a very nice looking attack there. Beastmen must not be enjoying all that blinding light. There we go. Watch the Archmages fight a little bit more. I take, yeah, it, it'll be a shame that they won't have this type of attack anymore once they're uh, mounted on dragons. Certainly, uh, hmm, certainly makes me think about their mount choices. Anyway, uh, beastmen are falling in droves. There's that chain lightning coming down from Feodian, uh, who has a bound chain lightning by virtue of being part of the uh, allure of life. And by the looks of it, most of the enemy main stack has routed, or at least their infantry have all routed, and it's now time to close the distance with the enemy lord. The enemy lord, a foot lord as well, so he ain't getting away from the dragons. Though he will try, he'll simply get trampled. And the enemy lord will break the balance of power shifts to about 90% in our favor, and it looks like only the Saigors remain in the fight. We can simply have Feodian chase the enemy lord down while the two dragons start working on a Saigor each, and ooh, enough mass on the dragon's charge to knock the Saigor down. I do find it funny how when uh, units knock each other down, they sort of, like, politely wait for the other unit to get up. It's it's always uh, I've always found it a little bit strange that there's no uh, that there's no animation that sort of capitalizes on the enemy enemy being knocked down. Everyone's too damn polite in <laughs> in Warhammer. <laughs> Uh, alrighty. Well, either way, the Saigors are distracted so they can no longer annoy the rest of our troops. They did some damage. 41 kills on you and... Okay, zero on you. This one did some damage attacking our spear line and nearly 10k 
damage, meaning probably the most damage that the rest of them dealt. Uh, but that's it, the rest of them being the beastmen. And that's it for this army. The beastmen are done and will chase down and destroy them. On top of that, though, there is another good use for Lamoureux, who has frostbite attack. So the Saigors ain't escaping this one. We'll be able to chase him down with eight speed only. Chilling aura combined with frostbite. Lamoureux can slow them down pretty insanely. The chilling aura, I think, is 40% slow by itself. And that frost, uh, and um, that uh, Psycho rather is done, and we'll head to the next one. Uh, we do have to have Lamoro close, so we'll use the Fire Dragon Breath, even though it's not going to do a crazy amount of damage on the Saigor. And because the Fire Dragon Breath applies the Flammable Debuff, which is a 25% slow as well. This will allow Lamoro to close once again, apply that Chilling Aura to slow the enemy down to 14. And then as soon as Lamoro lands to apply Frostbite, the Saigor ain't going anywhere either. Anyway, a little bit of killing on the Saigor but we can do that off screen. All right, well, there we go. I think that battle settles the question, settles the answer to a question we already knew. Dragons are scary. And, uh, yeah, especially the two special dragons. 41, 42k kills on Lamoro and 57 on Gordonar seems appropriate. Most of the enemy army was destroyed. We destroyed the Minotaurs, we destroyed the Lord, we destroyed the Saigors, the high-value targets, almost all gone. We got a little bit of money as a reward, frankly. Maybe I overspent and we could have done that with just the one dragon, but, uh, well... Probably better to overspend and not need to come back here and deal with this. Uh, ransom captives. Take the money, a little though it may be, and then move on. Karak Drin, mission successful, allies mission successful generally. You, move in to reinforce. Can we auto-resolve this? Let's find out. They like so. And Pyrrhic victory, but I I think we're fine. Let the... The dragons will heal, right? They'll heal. They It'll be fine. Huh. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Auto-resolve doesn't like the sun dragon. It doesn't care about the... Uh, the... Frost dragon. Huh. Well, that's curious. Oh, well, either way. Uh, we'll ransom captives once again, and the Bloody Dax tribe destroyed. And, hey, we got a warrior bane out of that. Not too bad of a pickup, I should say. Uh, now, in terms of how we move, we could delete a lord, because they are costing us 300 gold per turn. Hmm. Because Arwenel can certainly reach... Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I think... We'll keep both lords. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to send Arwenil directly to transfer the dragons to uh, uh, to Imric. Feodian, we're going to send down here instead to the Fortress of Vorag, where she can build our second unit of dragon princes. going to be expensive, I'm sure, but it'll be worth it, as dragon princes always are. Uh, we're going to switch you to... Okay, you know what? We'll do this one by one. In fact, wait... Can you move further? Yes, you can. Root Marcher for you and Shield of Safari, I guess, as well. Yeah. Something along those lines. And then, do you need to get anything? Okay, you already have Root Marcher. I'm not 100% sure about your dedication as yet. It's going to depend on what exactly it's, is going to be in your army, if we actually have you be an army because you have the incompetent trait. It doesn't really do anything bad to us, but it's still a trait that, uh, well, it's not going to be nearly as good as some of the other traits that we have options of. Now, there were some ideas in the uh, uh, in the comments about perhaps using the Intrigued Court A to make these two friendly with each other, or at the very least make them friendly with us. I guess the question question is, how much do we care about being friendly with the lizards and the lizards and these two being friendly with each other? Hmm. And the answer is I'm not sure. I'd like, well, the thing is that they're occupying territories that we don't necessarily want because they're yellow and we already have enough issues with the control without uh, going into these territories plus lizard units and undead units would be fun for us oh wow what the heck huh 
Camry is having a tough time against Scarbrand. That's interesting. That's interesting indeed. Well, that's their problem. And Great Mort... Oh, that's just Great Mortis Delta. I was wondering whether the uh, and the Vampire Counts were still alive under Manny down there. Anyway, I guess we could try a little bit of Intrigue. Uh, let's see. Intrigue at Court. We will take the Quarterly Baras and the Last Defenders and then improve their relations. Antian Influence, huh? Like so. And moving to 16, moving to 22, we could do it again. We could force establish a military access back, but uh, honestly, there's a lot better things that we could uh, we could save up for. I'm I'm not worried about Teclas because we're never gonna reach enough influence to be able to force confederate him, and before he dies, <laughs> and he really doesn't want to be friends right now. But uh, yeah, mm, maybe one more. All right, up to four and up to 42. Now, let's just hope that they'll be friendly with us as well. I mean, we could do another friendlifying thing with the uh, with the lizards, but I think while they're fighting the dwarfs, they're unlikely to declare war on us, and I'd like to save at least a little bit of the, uh, the influence for ourselves. Uh, let's do some building building. You, colonnade, most definitely. Okay, I was going to do this in order. Let's start from the top. Plan of Bones, you are fine. You don't need... Actually, you do need to switch commandments to rebuild Lost Splendor. Howling Wastes, you are fine because we just built you. And eventually we will have to tear down the enchanted walls here, I were at, ideally. But right now we can't be doing that. Um, Gates of Jar, yes. You're going to go to rebuild Lost Splendor and then we will build up the plaza next turn. Desolation of Asgore. You are going to build the promenade for a dam. Why is it so expensive here? Oh, whatever. And then you're going to go into banish corruption for a little while because your growth is, well, pretty bad. Uh, Dead Rock Gap, Mount Kanbad. I mean, I guess we can upgrade you. I really want that high place, but it's... Mm. It'll take 20 turns for this gold mine to pay for itself. Right now, it feels kind of not worth it. You know what? I think we'll wait until we have more money. Taurus of Thaw, you're kind of in the same situation until we've grown enough to upgrade Vol's Anvil to the next tier. Griffin Gate, we don't care about. Tyrannock. Eh, we can upgrade Toranrock. What's the income here? You know what? We're very positive right now. We'll collect a little bit. It's not much, but, uh, well, it'll hopefully be worth our time. Next up, Imric. Did I screw up last episode or did I not? Can oh, no, it looks like we can reach the Dragon Fang Mount, which is great. Go right here beside it. And then we will declare war on Kugath. What do we have in terms of defenses here? Oh, basically nothing. Very poor. You may look upon Probably could auto-resolve it. Uh, Dreadrock was probably where we're going to actually have to fight. Yeah, that looks kind of fighty. Oh. You know what? We may even have to send the dragons to defend Black Fortress, depending on how Kugath reacts to all this. Speaking of Kugath, he's currently at war with Goldtooth in the Caravan of Blue Roses. Goldtooth is the one that we somewhat care about relationship with. I'm still not 100% sure whether we keep him alive or kill him, because there are other ogre friends potentially to have, and I'm not entirely sure that we'll actually ever get any good units out of him. Uh, Pux, Makers of Nurgle, will declare war on for 1,500 gold. Like so. And the problem with Greasy is that he's friendly with Grimgor, which is not so great. I mean, we could intrigue them to hate each other a little bit, but once again, it's a little bit too early for that. We just don't have enough influence to uh, pull off that kind of thing. Anyway, Emmerich, we're going to move you into an attack in a second. Erethon, oh, kind of the same situation where we potentially want to move you into an attack. So I guess we're going to have to pick one of you. Uh, Feyd, okay, not Feyadian, Emmerich. I guess if you're auto-resolving, let's find out. Let's see what it says first. Go right here. Dragon strikes! Dragon strikes indeed. This doesn't feel worth fighting. Let us assign skill points first. Anything good here? Renown gets you a little bit of vigor loss reduction. I don't really care for most of this. And I'm still undecided about which of the affairs we would like to do. The thing is, getting it early would give us bonuses from industry. Or tariffs, rather. Man's Affairs is ports. 
High Elf Affairs is entertainment buildings. The thing is, right now we have more entertainment buildings than anything. Later on, we'll probably have in more industry buildings and then entertainment buildings, but for now we have no choice. You know what? And considering the fact that we perhaps want to confederate techless, maybe High Elf Affairs first is the way to go. And you know what? High Elves being kind of self-centered <laughs> seems kind of appropriate anyway, don't it? Anyway, Michaela, our Flame Master, you... Are, how's our magic here? Yeah, you know what, I think it's time for Lilith's Blessing. And is there another thing that will increase our... Oh, right, one with the ether gives us more ward save with Phoenixes. Man, Phoenix is just going to be unkillable in your army. Yes. Mm, ah, Power Sap will give us another five. Good, 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 good. All right, for now we're good. Let's uh, resolve Dragon Fang Mount and barely take any damage and occupy the place. Power Stone, decent pickup. The Grey Shadow Warriors, Dragon Fang Mount secured and plaguenated, but well, there's not much we can do about that. And we got to keep the Sea Dragon's Teeth, so an immediate 400 income. The corruption is going to be a problem, but hopefully we'll uh, knock it down. We're immediately going to build our Herb Gatherer's Camp because, well, we'll need to replenish, and the Plague may interfere with it. And then quickly attempt to take Shattered Stone Isle, Dread Rock, and Shattered Stone Bay before finding Kugath, wherever he is. Yeah, judging by the balance of power, he probably has two full stacks running around. One would probably be less since we're strength rank 2 and he's strength rank 52. And he's currently fighting again Gold Tooth and Caravan of Blue Roses. So he could be here, he could be up here. And if he's up here, decent likelihood he'll try to push this way. There's probably no way that we'd be able to defend the Sentinels against Kugat's full stack. But again, that's probably a reason to keep the dragons around. As we saw, they are scary, so that's good. Arathon, that means you get the fight, sir. Uh, let us... see if I can do this right. I hope I don't screw this up. Hmm. Are we allowed to land before... Hmm. I don't know. Go right here. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work, but uh, we got to give it a try. Go right here. No, go right here. Yes. Then we're going to ask whoever gives us most money to join the war against the Bleak Holds. Five and a thousand versus you. 877. Oh, Tyrannok, Tyrannok. Uh, oh, wait. The Phoenix Throne. Illyrian is the one that other factions don't like. Yeah, whatever. We kind of don't like Illyrian all that much ourselves, but uh, no, not war against Tyrannoch, but against the Bleak Holds. Oh, that would have been a screw-up. <laughs> yeah, give us money, please. All right, thank you, thank you. Erethond, let's see if I did this correctly. You are going to go into... Uh, still hard to hit. And you cannot switch stances, I assume? I can switch to Lilith's Blessing, that doesn't do anything for us, can you? Yes, you can. Beautiful. Oh, right, I forgot to take away the uh, Lichbone Pennant. Mm. Do we give it to the Eagles, or do we give it to one of the Archer units? The Eagles are fragile, but they do massive amounts of damage, but they already do massive amounts of damage. An archer unit with it, uh, what do we have? No physical resistance on the Black Guard of Nagaran, at least not base. We're definitely going to have to keep them away from the Eagles. There's also Medusa here, who does have 25% physical resistance, eh? Now, we could mob the Medusa with the Eagles. But at the same time, we could have archers fire on her. You know, and I'm going to say give it to one of the archers first. I hope I don't come to regret this. What kind of spells do the enemy have? They have Power of Darkness, they have Chill Wind. Okay, we'll have to watch out for uh, our blobs getting hit down. They have Spirit Leech as well. Too many casters. And they have Wild Wildform and Flock of Doom. Oh, wow, all sorceresses all the time, huh? A lot of heroes, but nonetheless, get to it. The 
Alrighty, here we go, Erethon at it yet again, and uh, he's been doing pretty good by himself here, relatively unsupported, probably trying to redeem uh, the nobles, as the game said that the uh, nobles in Kalidor were all, uh, uh, let's say, not up to Imric standards, oh, but anyway, anyway, I'm certainly thinking of making this guy our eagle-themed army, get some more great eagles, some eagle claw bolt throwers, he's an eagle kind of guy, we can't just have all dragon kind of armies, and the, each of the dragon heroes or lords or unique dragons will get their own army, but there's still a few other armies that need to be made that don't necessarily have to have dragons in them. And Arathond is a good candidate for it, because A, he started with eagles, and B, eagles are fairly quick to recruit in the sense that uh, you can get them fairly early without having to tech up too high. And we're still waiting on those eagle claw build throwers, mind you, but nonetheless. Anyway, our army is set up some dark riders charge into the arrows and attempt to charge a fourth towards our lines, but, uh, well, now that was born of desperation. I think Arathond is annoying some of the enemy dark riders and uh, dark riders with shields here, but they're not much of a problem, especially considering the great eagles are hunting them as well. Out here, the great eagles are showing off how their fairly decent unit assassins have taken about half of the HP off for the uh, Supreme Sorceress here, whose name, by the way, is Vanquish, <laughs> which is kind of funny. I do really like the Bleak Holds color scheme, though. Hmm. Sort of, uh, sort of, I don't know, dark green, I don't know the name for this green color, but I do like the color scheme. Well, either way, uh, Vanquish is uh, done for, well, vanquished by the eagles and fairly quickly, while the other sorcerer slowly but surely and uh, gets ripped apart by arrow fire. And there we go. Of course, this is just uh, the beginning skirmish of this part. What the heck was that, archers? Come on now. Uh, this was sort of just the beginning skirmish of this particular fight, as the main stack is all the way back here out of the garrison and the defense army rather than this little tiny army and that was outside granted we did do plenty of damage here and hope to do plenty more now the first thing we got to do here is get that uh, uh, and get that ring of cane on cooldown no guarantee that we'll hit uh, the enemies that are moving around especially as the AI likes to dodge spells but uh, once again we got to cast it and let it do what it can so that we can cast another one before the battle is over it would have been ideal if this had uh, hit the Black Guard of Nagaron, but frankly, at this point, I have no idea where they are since 90%, well, maybe not 90%, a lot of the enemy army is within the uh, within the forest stand, hidden from us. Not too bad, I think. It basically destroyed one unit and uh, clipped a few others, taking about 20-25% to 25 of the HP off of them. Dragons still flying around, identifying enemy units, and getting ready to go for some Doomfire Warlocks. We certainly don't want them casting their Doom Bolts or Soul Blights on our main line, which is fragile, and we're going to hope that the eagles can take care of them for us. Now that said, the Doomfire Warlocks are very much physically resistant at 40%, was it? 40%, so the eagles will have a little bit of a tougher time dealing with them. And it probably would have been better to send both eagles to fight them at the same time. But nonetheless, this is uh, uh, this is still saving uh, the rest of the unit. As long as the eagles don't lose models, uh, they should be fine. We will need a healer in this army, I would imagine. Maybe an Apotheosis healer, though, with uh, the um, Tempest spell that could help the Eagles maintain sort of a mastery over the skies, even at, uh, even despite the lack of dragons. Anyway, the Eagles have sent the Doomfire Warlocks routing. The Prince Arathond uh, is still fighting with them as well, and we'll get him his own Eagle mount, or maybe Griffin mount. Maybe Griffin mount. Hmm, I'll think about it. Yeah, elves get a lot of mounts, don't they? They get their steeds, they, their chariots, their eagles, their griffins, their various types of dragons. I do like it when you have a lot of uh, mount choices, because then even the same sort of lord, like just a prince, for example, can have, uh, well, different mount choices, and thus be a little bit different depending on the army that they lead. Anyway, while the eagles are taking care of the enemy cavalry, showing a little bit of superiority in uh, that light, the enemy army surges down the hill towards us. That said, all of our, or at least most of our range units, can't be, uh, can't be distracted by the shielded infantry, and are going to go after that blood 
Shadrach Medusa first as the biggest threat on the field. Gotta watch out for those rail guns as they can do quite a bit of damage if you uh, let them continue firing. Fortunately, Medusa are fairly fragile and with regards to getting hit by, well, tons and tons of archers. And the Medusa will go down. That said, this will allow a decent amount of the enemy to close, though hopefully uh, not so many. We'll move our Noble forward to apply his uh, Helm of Discord on the enemy and get that Wind Blast from his, uh, uh, his weapon moving right through them. Very, very nice. And the balance does uh, the balance of uh, the battle does seem to be still a relatively in our favor here. Bit of a shootout going on now. Dark shards are firing at us. We are focusing down the non-shielded dark shards here and ignoring the shielded dark shards by and large. We're also attempting to move the prince in to get that second cast off that uh, ring of Cain and with that bound fiery convocation as well. Here come the black guard of Nagaron, and that's who we've been saving that fiery convocation for. Even clipping them will be worth it as they're going to be very tough to bring down with only spears. And there we go, a fairly nice fiery convocation there, clipping the Black Guard of Nagaron, taking about 40% of their HP, and then moving through other units of enemies as well, ending on this unit of Dark Shards, which while not having been focused down, have taken enough damage to be ready nearly to rout. Now, our Eagles have been doing a lot of work, keeping a lot of the enemy fast movers back, and are fairly heavily damaged at this point, but have yet to lose a model, so we're okay there. Uh, Arathon, together with the um, no here I have moved towards the Black Guard as well as the Death Cag who leads them and will be attempting to fight them as well. And though that's a pretty dangerous position to be in, and there we go, Murderous Prowess is active and Murderous Mastery specifically for both of the Death Hag and Black Guard units. And the Black Guard will rip those spears apart in no time, and the Death Hag would probably defeat the Noble in no time as well, so we gotta step up on knocking them all out. Ooh, the enemy Supreme Sorceress has gotten close enough to be hit by her range. She is not mounted, and thus is too slow to dodge arrow fire. The AI does tend to do the dance with uh, single units that get focused like this, but it isn't enough, and uh, the arrows will bring her down at last. The Black Guard still hold their line, but it looks like the rest of their army is in pretty dire straits, and Death Hag's still leading them and still in relatively decent HP, but the Black Guard are beginning to waver. Over on the flanks, we've sent Eagles forth once again, once uh, the enemy has separated their troops a little bit more. Uh, one unit of Great Eagles to distract another unit of Dark Shards and rip them apart with their bleed application, and the other to once again chase down enemy range units. They're pretty good at that sort of thing, after all. And there we go, this will finally the army losses will force the Death Hag and the Black Guard of Nagaron to flee. The Black Guard were pretty heavily damaged and the Death Hag left essentially to last to shatter with the rest of her army. Very, very nice. Now, we're going to have to do our best to chase the enemy down, and despite the low model counts, eagles are actually very solid at chasing infantry down. They're very, very fast at 182 speed, plus their melee attack is high, and their bleed application allows them to keep applying bleed as they attack. If they could be combined with something that has maim on them, like the uh, snow leopards, uh, they would be quite strong. Hmm. Certainly a thought, but anyway, anyway, a nice battle, and hopefully we'll be able to take the Bleak Holds settlement without trouble with an auto resolve. All right, there we go. I think that went pretty darn well. We uh, certainly could have taken more damage if we weren't careful. The Eagles were very helpful as usual between the two doing about 40k damage. Once again, that fiery convocation uh, doing uh, very nicely for Arthon, who does not yet have a caster and thus certainly, uh, certainly needs it. Most of our archers ran out of ammunition and did win by and large the range duel, though they weren't so much focused on 
on the enemy range units as the enemy simply didn't have sufficient numbers of them to really threaten them all that much. Uh, finally, good job to the uh, spear line and the noble. The noble took damage to the enemy death hag and black guard of Nagron, but enabled to them and enabled to them enabled them to hold the line even while they were under murderous mastery uh, between uh, uh, between his helm of discord and the other stuff. Anyway, a uh, little bit of money or pretty much full healing. I think we're going to have to take the healing this time around since we'll have to besiege this place anyway and won't be able to heal up. Can I offer assistance? Enemy killed in battle, enemy killed in battle. Barded of Hilmar's steed for the noble, which is nice. Shadow armor gives us vanguard deployment. Assured assailant, Druki destroyer, and besiege if you would. Uh, let's go for high elf battering ram and besiege. And at least while besieging, we won't suffer attrition here, despite the uh, despite the massive Sanashi corruption. Next up, we have a rally available to us. We certainly want to go through all the way to stand your ground, but I think perhaps on Arathon, especially considering it's it's somewhat important in the early game, we'll probably want to go through Quarter Master and Renowned and Feared for the upkeep reduction. Not that his army is crazy expensive, but, you know, early gun and all that. Gondil. No more into opponent's troops yet, so hard to hit for you. You can probably have an eagle mount as well. Maybe we'll have a couple of nobles in this army, all on eagle mounts. And obviously we'll get more eagles in here as well. I'm just thinking this is going to be a very eagle-themed army, or as much as we can make it as such. Anyway. Hmm. There's also the question... Oh man, if this was tier 4, we could have kept that sorceress's abode and thus uh, used it as an archive, which we very much need right now. But oh well, not the biggest of deals right now. Imrek, that's a level, yeah, before we end the turn. I don't think Kugath is nearby, but well, there's a tiny, tiny likelihood uh, that he's in ambush somewhere. Although I sincerely doubt it since this place was, uh, well, free of enemies. Let's find out. Skip, skip, skip. Skip ban. Did I do diplomacy this turn? Oh, wow. Techless, really? Our strategic threat is rising, and you're liking us even less. Minus 30 to strategic threat. Oh, Techless. And defensive alliance with Avalorn. I mean, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, sure. Once we have the money, we can build another... Uh, uh, we can build another outpost in Avalorn until we're ready to confederate them and the outpost can generate influence for us, which will power us up in various ways, including to force confederate Avalorn. End turn now. But I didn't forget anything with regards to building Fator. Bubonicus is moved to Shattered Stone Isle, most likely to attempt to defend it against Imric, though I don't see that being particularly effective unless they get a full stack running. Razzle correct. still doing pretty okay against the uh, clan Moors. I think uh, once we sort of took care of their goblin problem, they were able to turn their full uh, beards towards the rats, and it's going a lot better for them, because auto-resolve on the rats should be pretty weak, generally speaking. Ally begins at post-construction, great for ally. We cannot reach Shattered Stone Isle, which means we're going to go into encamp. Really? Okay, fine. Uh, go... Wait, what? I mean, we don't suffer a lot of attrition. I'm almost tempted to raid. I will not oh, wait, we, we don't have a raiding stance, do we? Huh, I didn't realize that. Uh, we, well, I guess we hadn't needed it until now, but damn. I guess we don't cross the water, we just sit here. It sounds like we won't take Shattered Stone Isle anyway. We're quite close to reaching it. Hmm. Nah, I go here. And that should allow you to encamp still, so encamp you oh, shall, God. and just to double check, you can't cross right now, but you'll be able to hit Shattered Stone Warriors. next turn. Good. Good, Emmerich. Well, let's see what's going on out here. So, Feodian, you're still hanging around. I don't see Kugath around. I wish we had... Wait, do we have a spare hero? We do. If only nobles didn't cost so much. Hmm. Physical resistance plus five. For oh, wow, that's nice. Charge weapon str... Damn. That's really nice. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm kinda disinclined to let this guy go. Crushing 10 charge, 10 weapon strength, and 5% physical resistance. Uh huh. Alright, we're gonna get you on the field. Ugh, yeah, I know, but 
What if we never get another one? And another reason that I wanted you on the field was to act as a scout against Kugath. That's why I was wondering whether we have a hero. You know what? Go this way. I'd like to see if Kugath attempts to approach us from this direction. Uh, Arwenel, you're going to go towards the Black Fortress. And Feodin, you're still traveling down to the Fortress of Vorag. All right. That's you too. Erathond, you should be able to switch now to Noble Prestige and then auto-resolve the remnants of the enemies here, hopefully not taking too much damage. Now, basically no damage whatsoever. We'll occupy rather than loot and occupy because we'll be looking to Cloak of Beards, eh? Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. And we'll be looking to push up towards Vol's Anvil here. And possibly trade those guys all the forests. I mean, I, I, I'd be perfectly happy to give the Wood Elves all this garbage. Uh, cold territories. Oh, wow, they got two, uh, huh. They got two timber mills in this one territory, eh? And I got the Illyrian Reaver thing. Hmm, could build some if we wanted to, though. I guess here, because it's a red territory, it'll take forever to recruit them anyway. And besides, you're gonna wait for eagles. Good lord. 7.6k to recruit the Dragon Princes. But, uh, well, you gotta spend money to make dragons. Uh, the <laughs> How do they make dragons? <laughs> Alright. Uh, Ashridge Mountains, let's upgrade you. And then we got two turns. Okay, we could switch to Banish Corruption for one turn. Ugh. Fine, all right, let's do the rest in order. Howling Wastes, so you are going to get an upgrade to Promenade and then briefly go to Banish Corruption. The Wolflands, you are going to build up the Tower of Gorgoth first. 3.7k, damn, you're expensive. But I guess they're all, yeah, they're all going to be at the same level. Oh, whatever. And the Tower of Gorgoth is the safest one since it's the furthest away from any potential enemy attacks. More likely than not, we'll need to build temporary defenses up at the Demon Stump and the Gates of Jar. I don't see much of a choice in the matter. Well, either way, build those up and then switch once again briefly back to Banish Corruption. Everybody needs growth. Uh, you're good as you are. Keep Banishing Corruption. Dragonfang Mount. 2,000 gold for the exotic hothouse, eh? Quite a bit. Uh, Mount Gun Bad, no. Source of Thighs, still no, but one more turn and then we'll finally be able to upgrade one of these places. Toran Rock is heading up to the next tier, but we have nothing we can do about its public order. We can collect the income in Darnheim because we're going to trade it away. Next up, Diplomacy. What, if anything, do we have? Ooh! People want to trade. Court of Libaros and the Ice Court. I'm gonna say we have to prioritize you. Uh oh, the Lizards don't like treaties with Knights of Kalidor, eh? Fighting each other. Not super happy with each other either. I don't know, unless we're gonna start trading with the quarterly Boros. One. And we can still trade with Nagareth. Not the Ice Court, what can you do? Just gotta make as much money as possible right now. I think the South of Nahek, Western Provinces and Northern Provinces is nearly there for a military access, but I think we'll forego declaring war on anybody for now. Oh! You're fighting the Blue Roses? I don't like that. I don't like that because I don't want you to push towards the Dragon Isles, but we should be able to make it before you do. Uh, no elves want to confederate. Is there any mission not from Karak Kadrin, which is the thing that we'd want? And in fact, it's probably better to keep these missions undone, considering they allow us to sort of keep, a, keep an eye on enemy stacks, which ain't such a bad thing. All right, and I believe that's an end turn. Gotta keep looking for Kugeth and gotta keep ending those turns. We... Can we build an archive anytime soon anywhere? I'm almost tempted to say, since Tower of Gorgoth is being upgraded, despite the fact that there are other stuff to build, we really need that archive to unlock military advancements. We also have trade advancements, we just don't have the money to uh, get it up and running yet. I think we could confederate another one of the elven factions right now and get a quest going. Or find a Skull Island. Cough, cough. Anyway. And the turn and keep going. At least our economy is rising now and should rise quite a bit once we have the full Dragon Isles. Maybe we'll spend a little bit more influence on the... Uh... Hmm. Well, somebody suggested we do get an Administrator Lord. 
Now spend a little more influence on the lizard. Somebody suggested we do get an administrator lord, but at only 10%, I believe, reduction. It's nothing crazy. And kind of, kind of about it, at least. The problem is we need about, well, 10%. So at 300 plus upkeep for archmages, we would need... Uh, we would need 300 gold per turn to for the Lord to pay for herself, and therefore we would need to spend 3,000 gold per turn on upgrading things. I guess, well, this place would have paid for itself, but uh, the colonnade, maybe. I'll think about it. Anyway, what do we have here? Shattered Stone Isle. Do we have defenses there? We do. They're not major defenses, but uh, perhaps they're worthy of a fight. Emmerich does want to fight after all. And oh! Are you telling me he can't, he can't reach Shattered Stone Isle? I should have crossed the water. Well, that's my bad. That's definitely my bad. Hmm. Oh well, what can you do? Uh, go into ambush stance. Armana's full anyway. I really didn't expect it. Like, he, he started the turn once again not full, which I wasn't expecting. Do we prioritize trade advancements for the additional money, or do we prioritize building building? Let's uh, let's see what the buildings are looking like. So you will need to switch back to rebuild Lost Splendor. Howling Wastes, you're fine as you are, but we'll need to be rebuild Lost Splendor as well. Wolf Lands, you need to rebuild Lost Splendor. Oh, we're going to have a lot of stuff to build next turn. You're fine as you are. Dragon Isles... You're fine. Collect the and I know I know it's super negative, but we'll we'll deal with it. Mount Gunbad, I'm not gonna invest in you right now. Torse the thigh. I guess you can switch to rebuild Lost Splendor at last. Slash Calador itself. Toran Rock. I guess we build the gold mining pit. I mean there's a lot of other stuff here that is important, like a colonnade, but for now. We'll use it to grow you. Hmm. Yeah, all right. Uh, did I not pick the tech horse mask? Oh, you know what? We have enough money. Let's go for trade advancements. Uh, it's going to be costly, but there's some really good stuff in there. Specifically, the marble to reduce construction cost of all buildings by 10%, which is what we really, really want. Anyway, I believe we got others to move. Fayed, Yin, and Co. Okay, so Ayalair. Move this way. I see Greasy. And I see Kugath. Good, 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 good. Keep an eye on Kugath. Dragons, stay here. And go into Lilith's Blessing and just, just stay out here. I know you're costly, but we need you to do things. Uh, you are going to go right to the edge of the Black Fortress, and then next turn you will move to the Fortress of Vorag to begin recruitment of the single unit of Dragon Princes. And we'll see if Kugath tries to move around the Valley of Horns and then down to the Sentinels, which are going to be difficult to defend, I'm sure. But two dragons and potentially a bunch of other regiments of renown. Maybe he'll peace out with Goldtooth, who knows? Though somehow I doubt it. Frankly, Grease's defeat trade, being a trade defeat trade, would be pretty good for us as well, so I'm not married necessarily to the idea of uh, keeping him alive. Anyway, we want to go into Intrigued Court briefly, and let's talk to the Lizardman. Last Defender specifically, and improve relations. Moving up to minus 13, double up on it. I'm up to plus 7, alright, it's a little better. Still no Confetta, alright. And Krakodrin, no missions, but that just means that there's no enemies that we have uh, in common that are nearby. Uh, I'm really salty that I wasted the one turn on Emmerich. Uh, but oh well, Erethon, you can move again, sir. We do have the enemies attempting to defend the forest of Varnheim, which we just can't reach, which is a shame. You can reach the moon shard, and it suggests that if we can't reach the enemy, the enemy hopefully can't reach us. Hmm, that's a question. I guess we'll see. Also, where is Morathi? I don't see her. Perhaps she was defeated by Tyrion, at least I hope so. Go to the moon shard. I wonder if they're going to try to... Ooh, what do we have here? Uh, wow, they have some Executioner Defenders. Do we risk auto-resolving? It says casualties low, let's hope it doesn't screw us. Well, these spears are certainly hurt. We could loot and occupy. But once again, I feel like it'll be worth more to allies. And, eh, uh, healing's still okay. Another Talisman of Loic, and there's that great eagle for Erethon. I guess he can keep it. Why not? It does give him bleed as well. 
Nice. Next up, who's going to level up first? It'll be the archers and the eagles alike. I think the eagles will Can probably reach the level first, so we'll go for Silver Torrent for them. And the missile resistance could certainly help them out. Noble, no more replenished troops yet again. Let's get your Blade Master and into Foe Seeker. And I believe you're good. Who's up next? Arwenel. Wait, no. You're waiting for Kugath to potentially attack you. So nobody. Nobody. No buildings to build, no money, or at least no money to spend. So, once again, we end the turn. And we'll see where Kugath goes. We'll take the Shattered Stone Isle, then on to Dreadrock and Shattered Stone Bay. And hopefully the territory doesn't rebel. Though I guess if it rebels, it'll rebel at Dreadrock by the time we get there, so that'll be fine. Alright, Fader Bubonicus, are you going to run? Are you going to attempt to move towards us? A retake. Come on. Where's Nurgle? No, he didn't move. Oh, okay, this one. This one's the bad one. Five turns of minus five. Ah, uh, do it. Do it. Oh, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad for a few turns. Very, very bad. Right expires greater invocation of Ma Vol, rather. We still have three turns of invocation of Asurian, luckily. And we need to pop the invocation of Vol ASAP once again to get one of those special right. items. The perhaps buildings take priority. Kugath, still sitting at Karak... Uh, Karakaten. Alright, you just stay there. Keep acting as a scout. I fear that we can't afford to build the new uh, Dragon Princes right now, so I think we're going to have to wait on that one. Also, this is the main thing. Marble stockpiles, most definitely what we wanted. Alright, Erathon, back to you for a moment. I don't see this army moving here. We probably can't take the ancient city of Quintex either. No, it's a pretty good, uh, uh, it's a pretty solid structure. Let's move to Forest of Arnheim. Once again, I feel that we need to. Where are you going? Oh, Marathi's back. Oh, pleasure cultist and demon. It's like you know what? Maybe I should have destroyed this territory rather than leaving her there. She's gonna be trouble. Or is she? Looks like the AI... Well, okay, her unit herself is going to be trouble, but uh, the AI did not get her too many of the spells. She, they do have Arnold's Spells Black Horror, so we'll have to watch out for her blobbing up in... Well, uh, in a line. And these two aren't fighting. Mm. Oh, well, we still want False Anvil, once again, at any cost. If we have to kill the Wood Elves, we'll kill the Wood Elves. Uh, Feodin, don't move. Imrek, you are going to go into Noble Prestige. And let's see, is this worth fighting now? I mean, I kind of want to see Emmerich fight this episode, and since Kugats is a, Kugats all the way up north, and there's a decent likelihood that uh, we won't be able to reach him this episode. Which means we should probably fight with Emmerich here. Assuming that... wait. Since there's no stack of Dreadrock, I guess we can auto-resolve Dreadrock. Presumably. So we'll fight this. Go. Alrighty, here we go, and ooh, the uh, Dragon Breath does kill off one of the beasts of Nurgle. I'm happy about that, as otherwise they uh, might have been able to regenerate the damage. Not so much like this. Anyway, here we go, our first battle against the forces of Nurgle. Unfortunately for Kugath, his defense of the Dragon Isles certainly leaves something to be desired, as he's busy up north doing, well, not so much. Uh, we're going to take the tower down as the start of of our battle, and we are going to send Michaela in to try to cast something, but it looks like some doggos will attempt to uh, to chase her down. Not to worry, though, the doggos will, doggles, doggos will be riddled by arrows. And, ooh, a nice fire breath from Slayer, our sun dragon here, right into the midst of those exalted plague bears. Definitely a relatively big threat on the field, and uh, nearly 20k damage from it. 
we can do a little bit more firework on them. However, as Michaela will cast a uh, flame storm upon them while Solaire takes care of some ooh, uh, some of the enemy furies while getting hit by another enemy tower, which I didn't notice at first. So I guess we're going to have to bring that one down as well. Emric has touched down, fighting both uh, the enemy doggos and plague bearers alike. And man, the size of those hounds of decay or hounds of I think it's decay for chaos. And pestilence for beastmen, yes. Uh, make the plague bearers look quite tiny by comparison. And <laughs> oh, the Furies tried to land and attack Imric, but uh, kind of missed, which was kind of entertaining, since they basically all missed. Anyway, we have a pretty good position here. We're going to send the Scions of Mathlan, uh, led by our noble... Oh, damn, i got to remember to take you off that chariot. I really gotta remember to take him off that chariot. We want him to be able to fight single entities as they come towards the line, not do the whole Michaela charge around and annoy people things. Anyway, another Dragon Breath coming down from Emmerich, not doing too much damage this time around as it's through enemy Forsaken and Plague Bearers, which were moving through the barricade and thus did not have a, a formation. But at the same time, we gotta get it on cooldown. Just looking look at some of the uh, map effects, you gotta love all uh, that uh, techno sorcery of the uh, of the uh, lizardman territories, and the Skaven stuff. So for similar reasons. Anyway, uh, we send Solaire to finally knock down that magic tower. Rimmer continues to fight. Looks like the plague bearers uh, that were attempting to uh, hold him off are beginning to melt away now. And the Forsaken, I'm sure, will be booking it on out of there before long. In fact, we'll be booking it on out of there right now before even the last of the plague bearers melts away. Time to start moving the rest of our army into the enemy settlement. There's still a fair few enemy units to uh, work on, though we are starting to run out of ammunition on those archers. Certainly we will need to uh, make some uh, archer heavy armies that uh, will probably need ammunition bonuses. Quite a bit, I'd wager. Imric's army is of course not going to have any archers after a while. And even Arathons, I'm thinking we use Eagle Claws there as his range and not uh, Archers. Maybe a couple Gate Guard, but otherwise he's uh, not going to be Archer heavy. Plus we need a Lothurn Sea Guard army, that's for sure. It's a classic. Hmm, if only we could get a Sea Dragon to go with the Lothurn Sea Guard. But anyway, anyway, we've charged forth with our uh, Dragon Princes and they've surged right through those damaged Exalted Plague Bears. The signs of Mathlan are slowly moving with them as well, but uh, it's hard to keep up with the sheer killing prowess of the Fireborn and uh, uh, and the Scales of War, our other named uh, Dragon Prince unit. Emmerich has found those Chaos Furies which were previously annoying Solaire and has brought them down. And it's time to start sort of separating our army into uh, sort of uh, different parts. We're going to send the infantry through this side to hunt the enemy down here while the Dragon Princes and Co. hunt everybody up here as well. Alright, let's speed this up a little bit as we look for some enemies. Capture a minor location and ooh, well, well, well. Oh, damn, Emmer, come on now. Or <laughs> Maneth near a whiffed on that uh, particular Dragon Breath. But at this point, it's not like we really need to rely on it since most of the enemy units are uh, done. Chaos Lord seems to be booking it on out of there, away from the rest of his army. I do wonder if he's trying to escape, but this is not something you can escape, my friend, as Zimric and Manathnir will touch down. And pounce upon the Chaos Lord, who will get slowed by the flammable and has... Oh my lord. <laughs> he hasn't even gotten the chance to get back. Two hits from Manathnir, and he's down to 15% HP. One more pounce. And down goes the Lord. Damn. <laughs> that is that is scary. Imrix is of quite a strong fighty lord. 102 melee attack, 977 weapon strength, sans buffs. Out here, we've got some enemy units attempting to move up the hill, but this is a pretty darn good location to pop another flame storm from Michaela. There is an enemy cultist, however, and they've got a little bit of ritual magics of their own as a great unclean one makes its way forward and an attempt to hold back the tide of dragon princes and spears. 
maybe not a tide of spears, but the scions of Mathan being here are solid since they're offering the area, uh, not a sort of former ranks aura protection. They're offering the aura protection to our dragon princes nearby, or will as soon as we cast a bunch of spells. Although, by the looks of it, that Flamestorm has done a number on the enemy units of infantry that attempted to climb the uh, attempted to climb the ramp, sending the doggos and two units of Forsaken and back and away. Which is just about right. All right, the uh, great Uncle Man having a uh, great time. <laughs> the uh, Dragon Prince is perhaps not so much in this particular case, though they're not getting too badly damaged. We're going to back them off and allow Imrik to take care of this, simply because we don't want model losses from the uh, from the Dragon Princes. I don't know how easily a great Uncle Man can kill them. It's generally better for mincing infantry, but why allow it to do so? All right, and the balance power is at about 90%. Honestly, not much more to say as the battle will effectively be decided here. Most of the enemy units have already been destroyed, and the great unclean one looks to be getting ready to be banished even before the uh, uh, even before the summoning time runs out. I see they haven't. Uh, I see they haven't fixed this issue though. I remember when Total Warhammer's Warhammer 3 was released and the air units hovering like that was a pretty major issue. They sort of reduced it. I think it forces units to land after a little while of it now, but uh, yeah, it used to be worse than it is. Still, I'm surprised that it uh, it's still there, but I guess there are limitations to what you can do about the flying units. Anyway, down goes the Great Unclean One. There's still a cultist in there, but that's pretty much the last thing remaining of any kind of threat on the field. There is a Beast of Nurgle surging forward, but I think... I think as soon as the cultist is done, and these guys are just going to melt away anyway. But I guess we can watch them fight the spears and the archers a little bit, since as usual, Himrik and the dragon princes have been taking all the uh, have been taking the spotlight for this battle. And there we go with the fall of the cultists to the beasts of Nurgle melt away even before Himrik reaches them to help out. And a couple more units will begin melting as well, and we just gotta close the distance with them to force the proximity banishment. Hmm, maybe a neat effect to have like a, uh, like a unit who, well, it would be way overpowered by, against demons, or maybe a unit, hmm. I'm just thinking, what if there was like a contact effect that essentially forcibly banished demons, or a proximity aura effect that forcibly banished demons uh, on the field, might be neat. But perhaps would only work after time spent in melee, like you know how like the Berserk ability works and various other abilities. The longer you spend in melee, the more intense the effect is. But yeah, that would be really, really OP against demons. I suppose depending on how long you actually have to spend in battle, because uh, sometimes it might be just faster to banish them the old-fashioned way, rather than a magical way in that manner. Anyway, a decisive victory for us, and the first of the Nurgle, well, man defenses. I guess not really the first Nurgle place we attacked, but the first we fought will fall. And onward and forward towards Kugath. All right, there we go. No problem. A little bit of damage on Slayer there. The Fury is doing surprisingly well at uh, dishing out at least some of that damage. 1,700 uh, damage worth. Emmerich and causing absolute havoc in general. And Michaela. Well, not uh, killing everybody for us this time around. I held back a little bit, but getting some very nice area denial uh, with that flame storm there. So, quite nice. Occupy the place once again. And yeah, the control here is going to be horrendous, but uh, worth it for a fantastic province. Uh, the growth in this place shouldn't be horrifically bad due to the harbors. Hmm. 
I'm just wondering whether we go for a colonnade here. Well, here we wouldn't even probably build the colonnade because we'd probably want to just go for the elven fairground. As it would provide us money and reduce the construction cost here, we could potentially go colonnade and this, but then we'd have to forego the estate, though of course and the harbors do kind of... Uh, prevent the need for it somewhat, somewhat only, though. You know, nonetheless, I think we're going to start with the plaza. We can always swap it out later as needed. Anyway, enemy killed, another Shrieking Blade, another Vintner, sure. Someone receives Plague, yeah, they'll do that. And Dimrick, you've got a level up. Lord of Dragons for you now. Charge resistance minus 75% and melee attack minus 40 Pretty powerful hex for when we attack jerks. Uh, next up, we've got Power Sep, I believe, is the thing that we want to do. Suppose this is 5% to own armies. Hmm, could be decent if we uh, clip our own units. Uh, let's get you, sir. I think we're going through this, right? We want experience of years so that we can move towards favored by Isha for that income from post-battle loot. And just because it'll be a pretty huge amount over time. And Emmerich fights the biggest battles for probably generally the most money, so makes sense to me. Anyway, Arathon is good where he is, Arbonel is stuck, Yalair is stuck as well, and Feodian is not going to be building this turn. We are going to be building buildings this turn, though yeah, I see that public order dropping once again for that unhappy populace. Oh, elves, all right. Now let's go for the Elven Fairground here. Hmm. We still wouldn't spend 3,000, eh? Hmm. Here we... Uh, we still wouldn't spend 3,000. Not in a single place. Ooh, what about the Archive cost? Ah, wait, no, that's the Shrine of Assyrian. Archive is at 3.2k, and we do need to build it. Granted, at the cost of the other stuff, but we gotta build it somewhere, and we also gotta build that damn Elven Forge, but this one I think we'll save for the uh, Vol's Anvil location, as it also feels like it makes sense to have it there. The question is, would we be able to afford the Archive and get the Administrator Hero? And even if we did get the Administrator Hero... Hmm... Well... I guess we'll just build this in one place. All right. Uh, if we're going to get an administrator, which lore? I mean, it doesn't really matter, but which lore would be best for uh, defending? Mm, just checking the other stuff. It's got to be either... Well, metal if you've got walls is really good. So let's see. Do we have a metal administrator? We do not, alas. Conductor targeting range plus 50% for spells. That could be really, really nasty, depending. But anyway, uh, we have an administrator of beasts. So, well, we do want a beast lore. In fact, we'll probably put a beast lore regular mage into the eagle army. As it would make sense to do so. I guess it's lore of life again if we, uh, we have no administrator of life either. I don't think death is the way to go. But actually, there isn't much of a choice otherwise. It's beasts or death, basically. Death will at least allow us to kill single entities. Yeah, alright, fine. Let's do you. Like so. Then you can build this at a reduced cost. Shrine of a Sir. No. Uh, archive. Almost did that twice. And a state. And. Oh, we can't build the promenade immediately anyway. Damn, you're expensive promenade. 2.1k. It's. Well, I guess we'll spend it. And then we'll build the estate next turn. And we have no money to build anything else, which means we're kind of stuck in the... Uh, uh, we're kind of stuck in the rebuild Lost Splendor stance for a lot of territories. Over an additional turn that we didn't necessarily want to be in. And now it's going to take two turns to get to Dreadrock, eh? But we might be able to sail out of it and then hit the... Uh, uh, hit the Shattered Stone Bay afterwards instead. Unless we're going to reach Shattered Stone Bay in one turn. Huh, actually, wait. We might be able to. We might be able to sail to Shatterstone Bay and then sail to Dreadrock and then sail back. Hmm. There's potential for it. Uh, I believe that's the end of the turn, unless there's diplomacy. Though we will check it. I don't see anything interesting. So, skip, 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 skip. Ah. Skip, 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 and turn. 
Gotta get that money back. Feodin is just waiting, not healing the dragons, not doing anything because she wants to recruit those dragon princes. And hey, I was not expecting that. Marathi, you're actually willing to fight while we're in encamp stance. Admittedly, it's a lot of demon nuts and cultists and Marathi herself, but, uh, well. Uh, let's see about this. Definitely gotta watch out for that Soul Stealer spam and the Wand of Caradon giving her the uh, Bombardment ability. Go. Alrighty, for Ulthwan indeed, here we go, Marathi has decided to attack us. And she's got a pretty nice uh, army in the sense that it's a good themed army for her. Lots and lots of uh, demon nets uh, to uh, surge towards our line, as well as those cultists, oh, okay, those are dark shards, as well as those cultists of Slanish with their great swords. All right, what are what do we got in terms of stats here? 56 melee attack, 34 melee defense is quite low, and they have no armor, so they'll be very vulnerable to our missile fire. And Morathi is similar in that while she has regeneration, she has very low melee defense. And at 105 speed, I don't think she can escape the Great Eagles. We've already seen in the previous battle with Erethon, the Great Eagles quickly rip an enemy sorceress apart, and I don't think Morathi is going to be all that different as the prince will lead the eagles forth and marathi will lose her h damn she's losing her hp fast <laughs> this is not a great position uh 20 hp already within seconds and a very solid use for the eagles well, some great showcase of the uh, of the eagles this particular episode they've obliterated the cavalry they've obliterated marathi and should be able to chase her down since they outspeed her fairly considerably get a nice line of that fiery invocation and going through the enemies i think it knocked out about two of the enemy units of demon nets but demon nets being vulnerable to range fire even despite their 20 percent physical resistance are getting kind of obliterated by our high elven archers anyway 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 marathi a couple more hits will suffer i don't know why i said it like that that, and we'll at last drop out of the sky. There we go, very nice eagles, and you can switch to targeting the enemy range units. In the meantime, some demonets have reached our lines. We're going to activate that uh, breath ability from our uh, noble, who will then charge into the back of those demonets to get a little bit of morale shock in them while they attempt to rip through our spear lines. Over time, demonets should be able to uh, defeat a spear line. Granted, these aren't exalted demonets, but they should be able to out damage them. But I just don't think uh, this will be sufficient. A with the charge of the noble and the activation of his uh, uh, of his helm of discord, the demonets just did not do enough damage to the spears to make it count. Back here, the eagles have landed and are distracting the only two units of dark shards that the enemy have, and we've seen them rip apart dark shards many a time before in Arathon's previous battles, and uh, they're doing quite well at doing so again. Plus, I really enjoy the uh, eagles' animations as well. Just like the dragons, the flying units have some... Uh, have some fun animations. Anyway, uh, after uh, the demon nets, uh, the cultists of Slanish surge forth as well with their great weapons, but they are low in numbers now. Since the entire enemy army is low in numbers now, they have no Morathi's magics to support them, no, uh, well, no demon nets pretty much at this point either. No range and no hope of surviving. The cultists will be sent packing, the last of the enemy units will begin to rout, and by the looks of it, this battle very, very quickly will be ours. But that's just the nature of fighting a non-Chaos Warrior uh, Slaneshi army. They're going to be uh, hard damage dealing, but at the same time, they're going to be quite fragile. Sorry, cultists. And funnily enough, the fact that we have basic archers in Arathon's army actually lends itself quite well to fighting specifically Morathi's Slaneshi faction. So, uh, not so bad that it hasn't been uh, retrofitted as yet. Generally speaking, my plans for this army are to uh, replace the spears with Silver and Guard, especially considering Silver and Guard aren't crazy 
expensive. And uh, replace the High Elven Archers by, and well, not all of them, with uh, uh, Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers, and then get a bunch more Eagles in here as well. Maybe a couple Nobles, and of course a Mage. Oh! Hmm. I was thinking of a Healing Mage in this army, but maybe a Beast Mage would be more appropriate. It does feel more appropriate, yeah. I think I was I think I was thinking about that earlier at some point, but anyway, a little bit of chasing to do or not so much as though it is a close victory due to the ammunition expenditure, Morathi's army falls. Hey, a glittering scales out of that very nice and feels appropriate for an item acquired from Solanash. They probably spent the entire time preening looking at themselves in those scales just as uh, just as Sigvald intended. Anyway, we got a decent amount of cash for our reward, and though we are damaged, we're not so damaged I think that we necessarily need the heal, and this is more money that we can use to build stuff, so I think build stuff we shall. Ransom captives. Gotta remember, we're also in our own territory, sort of, as well as in camp. And Noctilus will redeclare war on us once again. Uh, he's currently at war with... Hmm. Well, let's hope our allies will join us. Well, they will. Surprising. And here they come again. Damn, and Arathon was just doing his own thing. And pretty good uh, to that, or pretty well uh, to that. But oh well. It was bound to happen again. Hopefully Aetan can deal with them to some degree. Especially since we're taking care of the uh, Cult of Pleasure issue for them. Uh, glittering Scales, and then we got Hag Butcher on... Arathond. Mostly it's kind of a meh thing, but the hero action cost reduction faction wide will be nice. Once we have enough money to actually have a bunch of heroes running around acquiring influence for us, spamming it, uh, then it'll be a fairly significant buff. We healed up nearly to full with Arathond as well, which is great. Anyway, folks, with that, we're out of time for battles to our name this particular episode, so we will have to... Uh, can you reach? Oh, you can actually reach Dreadrock. Go figure. Ah, I don't think that you could, but then you go there. Might as well take it, why not, while we're here. Ought to resolve that, it's really not enough to be concerning ourselves with. Once again, hurt on those poor High Elven Rangers, but oh well. Occupy. Lovely. A uh, free sword of might that we will hopefully turn into something a little bit more useful. Next turn, we should be able to sail Imrek out of uh, Dread Rock, which funnily enough does not have a plague, and then hit the Shattered Stone Bay. The attack on Shattered Stone will most likely cause a rebellion at Dread Rock, but we can simply sail back there, destroy the rebellion, etc. I'd prefer to keep collecting income. I mean, the place is already making a thousand uh, gold and uh, yen. Ooh, by the looks of it, this was a good move as it'll allow us to take Shattered Stone Bay at Tier 3, or attack it at Tier 3, thereby take it at Tier 2, rather than at Tier 1. So, and this was definitely worth our time. Kugath still stuck. I think what's happening here is that because Goldtooth has a stack and a half here, Kugath can't leave Karak Krakaten, as the AI believes that if it does, uh, it'll uh, lose this, so... <laughs> He's in a deadlock, and this is allowing us to push up north through his territories until we eventually, inevitably, end up fighting his main stack here, and thereby destroying him. Which is, uh, well, which is fine by me. Anyway, folks, as I said, we're out of time, and I'm gonna have to call the episode here next time we continue hunting down Kugath, and as well trying to deal with what's going on here with the Vampire Coast. Alas... I don't think Valzandel can defend itself without any, without any more stuff, but we do have potentially enough money to start on a new army. We'll probably need more than one army around Ulthuan, after all, so there's that to consider. Anyway, as I said, more elves to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially to Threshold. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.